All right. Good evening and welcome to Wednesday night prayer meeting. We'll be getting started in just a moment. We'll be kicking off here in just a minute. Welcome to Wednesday Night Prayer Meeting. We'll be getting started in just another minute. If you're on right now and you can hear me, give me a thumbs up and we'll be getting started here in just a second. All right. It's 7.01. We're going to go ahead and kick off. We're going to go ahead and get started. It is Wednesday night, and I'm glad you're with me. This is episode number 101, and I'm thankful that you're here with me. My name is uh, Pastor Don with Altoona First Southern Baptist Church. If you're uh, just joining us, if you can hear me, give me a thumbs up and let me know that my audio is working this evening. Um, but I do welcome you to come visit us at Altoona First Southern Baptist Church at 903 North 4th Street in Altoona, the Juniata section of Altoona. And Wednesday night prayer meeting, if you're new to Wednesday night prayer meeting, each week I try to share a, a short lesson from the Word of God and then we pray together. And, you know, I'm here to, to challenge you. Uh, I'm here to uh, share the Word of God with you this evening. And I'm here to pray with you tonight. And so... You know, as we come together this evening, uh, lift our hearts and our minds uh, to the Lord and, and seek His wisdom and guidance in our lives. You know, we hope uh, this time of prayer will bring you comfort and hope and strength to all that join us this evening, including my cat, who's right here. So let's go ahead and get started tonight. Um, I want to talk about something that's that's familiar to all of us, um, and so I, I just want you to imagine something with me with me here for a minute. It's uh, something familiar to all of us. You know those times that we've spent on family vacations or, or work trips, or you know even being around a, a group of folks for any long stretch or period of time. Uh, you know, maybe with family or friends. You know, those those times when you feel like uh, keeping everyone happy and at peace and how that can almost be like trying to herd cats sometimes, right? And so, now picture this. Picture this. Join me here. You're on a long road trip with your loved ones. And at first, everything is going great. It's going smooth. There's laughter, there's great music playing on the radio, memories are being made, there's beautiful scenery going by, but as the hours begin to pass, people start to get tired. Maybe, just maybe, a little cranky. The kids start to bicker, maybe kick the back of the seat, and you and your spouse have a little disagreement about directions, or maybe you and a family member. And before you know it, there's this tension that's building and building and building and building and building. And, it's, and it is natural, isn't it? I mean, it's natural. We're all human. No matter how much we love each other, sometimes there's friction, right? Sometimes there's a clash. And so in life, just like on a road trip, we're going to hit some speed bumps, and I know right now in my neighborhood, we have quite a few of those because they've been doing some road work on our street. And so there's quite a few speed bumps. But, but our lives will be filled with speed bumps along the way. It's totally unavoidable because 
we're all imperfect. And we can try our hardest to get along, but there will be moments. There will be moments, right? When our best efforts, our best effort, our best efforts just aren't enough. And you know what happens then is, you know, we say things that we don't mean. Right? We say things that we don't mean. We make mistakes or you know, and, and sometimes you know we'll hurt the people that we care about the most. And yes, there are times when others do the same to us, causing us harm and causing us pain and uh, you know, causing us headache, right? And, you know, we need to remember that even in those tough moments, God's love is constant. Just as we keep moving forward on that road trip, we, we can keep moving forward in life, leaning on His grace and striving to love one another despite our flaws and our failings and, you know, things that just kind of get under your skin sometimes, right? Right? You know, we're all in this, we're all in this journey together. And with God's help, we can navigate through any conflict that comes up. And we'll come out of it stronger. I promise you this. We'll come out of it stronger on the other side. And so tonight, our topic is focusing on resentment. It's focusing on resentment. Um, and so when we talk about resentment tonight... My message is, is, is titled, From Bitterness to Blessing, Healing Through Forgiveness. You know, we will disappoint, we will hurt, we will wrong people around us, even those we love dearly. And it's important that we learn to deal with the, the inevitable wrongs and hurt that we suffer in life. And the remedy... The remedy is found throughout God's Word. And God's Word is what? It's forgiveness. God's Word is forgiveness. And it says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. That seems pretty clear, right? Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you and has forgiven me. The warning is clear. When we are wronged, we are to forgive the offender. I know that's hard. That is, we no longer hold any resentment, bitterness, or grudges against the one who caused the suffering. But even with such even with such clear guidance, I mean, that's a small, that's a short verse. It's very, very clear guidance. It's difficult to comply in this world that we live in. Because you know, it's hard to comply when the wound is painful, the offense is grievous. However, let's consider Let's consider, let's think about this a little bit. What's at stake if we decide not to obey God's command? When we hold on to anger and we refuse to forgive. And again, I know that's hard. It's something that even my family has struggled with a lot. You know, it hurts us deeply. Think of unforgiveness as a, as a, as a poison. Think of unforgiveness as a poison that slowly spreads through our entire body. And we might be upset with just one person. But that bitterness, that bitterness that we feel deep inside of us affects all of our relationships. And if you're not self-aware, you know, you're hurting people left and right and you have no idea. You have no idea. It's like dropping. Have you ever done this like when you were a kid, like with some paint or like with some ink and you would drop a bit of ink into a glass of water? You know? Soon what will happen, like it spreads out, right? And the whole glass, the whole glass is colored. Unforgiveness just doesn't, it doesn't just stay in one part of our lives. It ends up touching so many things. It ends up touching everything and everyone around us. But letting go and forgiving 
is a path to healing and a path to peace. So first, there are a couple of points here. It affects us internally. The Bible reminds us of what Jesus said in a story about a man who was given so he was he was forgiven so much this guy. He was forgiven so much this this man but he refused to forgive someone else. And so in Matthew chapter 18 verse 34 through 35 it says in anger his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he paid or until he should pay back all that he owed. If this is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how our heavenly Father will treat each other unless you forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. By the way, happy birthday, Vincent Mucle out there, I see you. So that's Matthew chapter 18, verse 34 through 35. And so, considering how much God has forgiven you, has forgiven me, has forgiven all of us, we have no right, we have no right to hold anything against anyone else, against others. In all our attempts to, to, to get revenge or to get even, we end up being tortured by our own bitterness. And again, that just radiates through everyone else around us and everything that we touch almost. It affects us also spiritually. When we hold resentment, when we hold unforgiveness, it, 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 it affects us spiritually. In addition to, to causing emotional stress, Unforgiveness stunts our spiritual growth and our walk with Jesus. It hinders our service to God. It grieves the Holy Spirit within us. It robs us of our fruit. It gives the devil a perfect open doorway. A perfect open doorway. An opportunity to create a real mess in our lives. And in this world, we already have enough mess, right? We don't need the devil to add any more on. And so, if you look at that Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 through 32, it's just not worth the cost. It's just not worth the cost. And furthermore, it affects us physically as well. Resentment can affect how we look and feel both physically and mentally. And experts often find that depression and emotional issues stem from unresolved bitterness. There's things that's going there's things that are happening in our heart. And if we don't address those feelings, we suffer twice. Right? I'm sure you felt that way. We all have. First, you know, we you know, we suffer twice. First from the initial hurt, and then from the harm that we cause to ourselves by holding on to unforgiveness. We drink from that poison of unforgiveness. Our unwillingness to forgive can harm our relationships with others. I mean, bitterness doesn't just affect us. It spreads, it spreads to all of those around us. I mean, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15 warns us, Look after each other so that none of you misses the grace of God. Watch out that no root of bitterness grows it to trouble you and corrupt many. So watch out that no root of bitterness grows to trouble you and corrupt many. When we involve others in our complaints, in our bitterness, our negative attitude hurts them. We can lead them away from their faith in Jesus, by our careless actions, by our walk, by not being aware of what we're doing to other people, causing them to sin right along with us. Not forgiving others also harms our relationship with God. Holding on to grudges goes against the message of the cross. 
then we need to cling to nothing else but that cross. Jesus gave his life so that we, so that we could be forgiven. And our sins against God are much greater than anything someone could do to us. Am I right? It is prideful to think that someone's wrong against us is unforgivable when we expect God, when we expect Him to forgive us of our mistakes, of our failings, of our sins, right? Jesus made this very clear in His, in his, in his instructions regarding prayer. This is in Matthew chapter 6, verse 12. Sorry. And forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And in some cases, depending on which translation you're looking at, that could be debts, right? But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sin. That's Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 and 15. So, let's do this. Let's go ahead and read all of chapter, all of Matthew chapter 6, verse 8 through 14. I know you know this one. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins or our debts. And we also have forgiven our debtors or other sins. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. So, when a person trusts in Jesus as Savior... All of his or her sins are forgiven forever. And from then on, the believer is to walk in obedience before God. And that's not to say, that's not to say sin is exclusively a thing of the past, rather. When we, when we do wrong, we are to talk to Jesus, we are to confess, to receive cleansing. And to, and, 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 as it says in 1 John chapter 1-9, through 9, it says, but if we confess our sins to him, remember, you only have to confess to one person. There's no middleman here. You just go right straight to him. You go right straight to the Lord and say, if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. But if we let, if we let the sins of unforgiveness remain, then we can expect our heavenly father to discipline us. And you can find that in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 7 through 11. I know it's hard, as we are humans here on earth. I know it's hard. It's time to let go of unforgiveness. It's time to let go of resentment. Holding on to grudge, it isn't worth all the negative consequences. Instead, you need to address your resentment and step into freedom with Jesus. You need to confess it as sin. So often we want to think of an unforgiving spirit as, as, as a noble fight for justice. But we are wrong. The offender must pay through revenge, right? That's what we like to say. Through revenge, you're getting what they have coming to them. Yet, you got to think about this, right? Yet, we would never want God to take that approach with us when we've sinned, right? We don't want him to seek revenge on us, right? we got to think about this. we got to think it through. His word says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. That's Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. Although what was done to us was a sin, we must acknowledge that our forgiveness, our unforgiveness, our unforgiveness, our resentfulness is a sin as well. When the hurt is deep, 
The process may be lengthy, one step at a time, one day at a time. I, I, I mean, I know this. I've been through this. And I've said this countless times. We have to repent. You don't need to get even. You need to surrender that need into God's hand and, and ask Him to remove it. Take it out of your heart. This initial step is important. But you must also realize that when you're, the hurt is deep, the process is going to be longer. However, you can also give your pain everything, all those burdens that you're facing, and give them to God. Thank Him that He's forgiven you of all your wrongdoings, your sins, and ask Him to enable you to do the same thing. He's going to give you the strength. He's going to give you what you need to get through this. I promise you that. And I know this is going to be hard for you. You that may be holding unforgiveness, that may be holding resentment in your heart right this very minute. You need to pray for the other person. This is one of the things that I found to be most helpful in changing my attitude towards those who have hurt me. Or who have hurt members of my family. Or who have hurt friends, right? It's also something that Jesus commands us to do. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. That's in Luke chapter 6, verse 28. It's amazing how God softens our heart when we turn our pain and struggle into prayer. We need to love and do good to the wrongdoer. Once again, Jesus says, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Which is basically the golden rule, which is treat others the same way you want them to treat you. You know, and, and you can find that in Luke chapter 6, verse 27, and Luke chapter 6, verse 31. In our own strength, we can never bring a, this about. You know, we can never do this on our own. But as believers, we have the power of the Holy Spirit, which enables us to do whatever God has commanded us to do. Showing kindness to one another, to, to, to the one who wronged us, may be the path the Lord wants to use for healing. And for reconciliation. However, when that occurs, it's still a blessing for us to be able to release our bitterness and replace it with kindness. Right? It has been said that we are, that we are never more like Jesus than when we forgive others. We need to forgive others. The hurts, the offenses we suffer should be seen not as causes for anger and resentment, but as opportunities to trust Him and to let Him work on you to transform us. If we surrender our hearts to the Lord, knowing He has holy purpose for them. We'll enjoy his peace and his joy instead of that poison that we're drinking from in, with bitterness and with unforgiveness. Have you asked Jesus to come into your life? Is Jesus part of your daily discussion? Is he the one you talk to throughout the day? Or are you trusting your own goodness for your salvation? Don't make that mistake. But by faith, open your heart to Jesus tonight and then ask Him to help you to focus on what is important in life. Ask Him to change your heart and mind that you can get rid of that unforgiveness inside, that yearning you know, for purpose. Maybe you've been carrying burdens and, and regrets and guilt and shame, or you just have this simple ache in your heart. Through that personal relationship with Jesus, he offers us a new beginning, a path filled with compassion, filled with forgiveness, and eternal love, and eternal life. It is a journey, not of solitude, but of fellowship with the one who promises to never leave us or forsake us. It's, it's, it's our relationship with the one who created us. If your heart wants peace, if you seek purpose greater than yourself, I encourage you to make a decision tonight. By not making a decision right now, that is making a decision. Make a decision right now. It's the most important decision you're ever going to make. 
When you close your eyes for that last time, it's going to be too late if you haven't made that decision. You might be thinking, I don't know what to do. Don't wait any longer. Right now can be the point in time in your life where change begins, where joy begins, where happiness begins, where a new journey begins. You can, you know, we, we can walk a path together with Jesus by our side. You don't have to be perfect. He offers a message for each and every one of us of hope. It says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I mean, imagine this, this trade-off, this exchange. Jesus, who loves you deeply, took all of your mistakes, your regrets, your wrong turns that you've ever made in life, the things that weigh your heart down, and in return he handed you a gift. He handed you a gift, the fullness of his love, grace, and purpose. In Romans chapter 10, verse 9, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So you have to acknowledge your need. You have to turn around. You have to repent. You have to follow Jesus. You have to walk alongside of him. This is not about religious ritual. It's a genuine personal relationship. It's a trust that he is who, you know, you have to understand and trust that he is who he says he is. The Savior, the one who brings healing and who brings purpose to our lives. And then you have to believe. Faith is not, faith is not a complicated thing. Religion makes it complicated. It's as simple as just trusting that Jesus is real. That his love is authentic. And that he has a purpose and a plan for each and every one of you. Taking that first step towards him is like embarking on this grand, this, this incredible adventure filled with hope and filled with promise and everything that you've ever wanted. I'm telling you the truth here. Jesus is the only way. And you could start this new adventure tonight with this short prayer. Will you join me in this prayer if you're ready? It goes like this. Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner, and I need your forgiveness tonight. Lord, I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins, and, and you rose him from the dead. And I want to turn away from my sins from this day forward. And I invite Jesus Christ to come into my heart and into my life. I want to follow him from this day forward. I want to trust him as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, please let us know this evening. Please let us know that you invited the Lord to come into your heart, that you have that personal relationship with Jesus. And tonight I want to go ahead and we're going to pray. We have a, a list of those that we're going to pray for this evening. And I encourage you to, to get a pen or a pencil and write down every one of these individuals. And I encourage you truly to pray for each one of these individuals every single day that you pray it's truly powerful it is truly life-changing when you pray relationships are definitely restored when you pray sickness is healed when you pray hope rekindles in each and every one of us when you pray strength renews when you pray answers come right Will you join me in prayer right now? Father, thank you for this beautiful day, Lord. Thank you for this rain, this, you know, for, for cooling it off outside a little bit. For everything that you do for each of us in our lives. Thank you for all the blessings. Lord, we are broken. We are all sinners. And we come to you tonight. We lift up our church family and friends who are facing different challenges, who are facing health issues, Lord. We ask that you bring your healing touch, reminding them of your love and hope and peace and, and bless their families with comfort and peace while you work and you mend them, Lord. Lord, tonight we lift up Stacy Miller Singer with her shoulder issues. We just help her, Lord, and we just ask that you help her with her discouragement, her frustration. Give her that mental strength to deal with this struggle, Lord. We lift up the Piper family, Beth Piper and Cassidy Piper and Jacob Piper and I know that Lord that you've touched Jacob and you've healed him Lord we just ask 
that you continue to be with that family tonight. We know he's going to see a specialist, Lord. And we lift up Jennifer Woomer Hamilton for her ongoing health concerns, her dialysis. We lift up Peach for her grandson Hazen, her brother Woody. And Father, we lift up our, our dear friend Scott Beck and his brother Dan Beck for their ongoing health issues, Lord. We just lift both of them up to you, Lord. We lift up Cookie to Stefano as she's at the village. We just ask, Lord, that you give her the strength and the energy, the motivation, everything, Lord, to be able to get up and to walk and to use her legs, Lord. We just ask that you give her all that she needs. We can do all things through you. We know that. And Father, we lift up. Uh, I know last week, Lord, we prayed for Dolly and her husband, Mike. We continue to pray. I know they're on a journey. I know his journey on earth is drawing near, Lord. And I know he was on a ventilator last week. I don't know any updates, Lord, but I just I just turn them over to you, them and their family. And tonight we lift up Sonny Schaefer, Jordan and, and, and Robin Phillips and their families and their business and Alan and Jen Gallagher. The Snyder family, Vicky, April, the entire um, uh, Snyder family, Buzz and Deb Stell, Carrie B and her kids and family, Carrie and Kevin Prusnak and their family. And Lord, we just ask uh, for prayer tonight for Megan DeGaulle and um, her sweet Mia Grace. Lord, we just lift them both up to you. Tyler Magaha and his family and his business. And Father, we just also lift up Edie Elizabeth Johnson Lowe and her family, her children. We pray tonight for the Rudisil family, John and Linda and their family. And Rose Murrow and her family. Joshua Jacobs and his family. Eli, Owen, and Amia. And also uh, Megan Christophic, Lord, just work in her life. Just show her that you're real. Lord, just allow the Holy Spirit to move in a powerful way. And we lift up Joe Stufio and his wife Peggy. The McGee family, Lord, Holly and Warren and the kids. Lord, protect their family. Help them in their faith walk. And Father, tonight we lift up Victoria Musselman and Chris Wilson, their family, their kids, their marriage, their upcoming marriage. Gwen Fisher and her family. Sheila Fenny and her family, and I know Gavin went and joined uh, the military. Lord, we just lift him up to you as well. And Charles Gilliard, as he struggles with the loss of his wife, it's, it's daily, Lord. And we just ask that you continue to be with him, to continue to bring him comfort and peace as only you can, Father. And tonight, Lord, we also lift up my cousin Tina and her husband Jose and the kids. Steve Stevens, Christopher Cross. Julie Hercheck, Julie's family, Dean Brandon, his wife, Nathan Slippy, and the Berry family, Christine and Ralph and Tyler and Braden and Jordan and Lord. Tonight we lift up Ralph's mom, Sally, and her sister, Peggy, with their ongoing health issues. And we also pray for Christine's dad, Merle. And Father, we love and we pray for Pastor Paul and Cindy Johnson and their family and their kids and grandkids. For Anthony English and his wife Polly, we just ask for continued healing with Anthony's lung. And be with Aaron Bomeisel and her son Daquan and the entire Bomeisel family. Glenn and Don Rabenstein and and their loss of a mother, a mother-in-law, Betty. Lord, we just ask you to be with them and their family as they continue to grieve. And Tammy Lingenfelder, Danny Campbell, Butch, and their family. Vincent Mukul and his wife Lillian. Vincent, Lord, thank you for blessing him. I believe he's 34 years old. Lord, continue. Thank you for bringing him into our lives, into our church family. Lord, happy birthday to him, Lord. And uh, Lord, for Lillian, baby Lorenzo, and Castro in Oakland, and we pray tonight for the Sanders and Stefano family, the entire family, and Dave and Linda also, and First Baptist Church of Seward, Pastor Rex, Pastor Rick Miller and their families, and also for BRN, and Lawrence and, and Kayla Rissler and their family and their business. And Father, tonight I lift up my family, my wife and my son Elliot and Becca 
and their the Miller family in Texas. And Lord, I just I just pray that you give them wisdom and guidance, and Lord, and just be with them as they're planning their wedding, Father. And I pray for my mom and dad. And we pray for our fellow pastors in our community, Lord. We come to you with prayers for our community, our nation, and our world. For our community, we lift up our neighbors and our family and the college students around our church, asking for your blessings and guidance in their lives. We also, Lord, pray for the many missionaries all around the world, Lord, that are shining your light, spreading your good news, and providing service to others, both here and abroad. Lord, just be with them and keep them safe. And for everything that's going on, all the struggles in the Middle East and Israel, all the wars and rumors of wars, be with the innocent families affected by conflict and grant them comfort and hope and a path forward towards peace. And Father, we know that there's a political election coming up, Father, and we know that there was an assassination attempt this week, Lord, and we know that we need to be praying fervently for revival for our nation, Lord, that we pray for every political leader, Lord, we we, we just lift up our country, Lord, and we need to we need to come back to you, Lord. I just pray that our that everyone around our country says, you know what? We need to come back to you. We need to turn our eyes back on Jesus, Lord. We need to just lift up our nation for wisdom and righteousness in our leaders, protection for our military, and a renewed sense of unity and purpose for all. This is a fight between good and evil. This is no political party. This is between good and evil. And for our church, Lord, we just pray for our continued growth, for continued blessings. Lord, we just pray to, to the, for, for the family, Lord, that, that gave such a wonderful gift to our church this week. Lord, we just ask that you bless them. And finally, Lord, help us. Lord, help us to continue to look forward, to not look at our past, to give all of our, everything that we've been carrying, all of our burdens to you. Lord, thank you for your unfailing love and answered prayers. We trust in your grace to lighten our burdens. Lift us with, or lift us, Lord, and fill us with your peace and strength. Strengthen our hope and faith as we continue our walk with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And it's truly, I just love it that, you know, when you're going through and you're praying, the calmness that comes over us, that, that, that peace that we have in our heart. And so, I do have to plug it just a little bit. I want to plug out to the First Southern Baptist Church, our church. We're located at 903 North 4th Street in Altoona. It's a Juniata section. We are a family. We start at 1045 in the morning. Don't worry about dressing up. Come as you are. Just dress casual. Bring a friend and neighbor. And if you don't live around this area, but you know you, you really enjoy our ministry, our ministry has uh, been helping, you know, I encourage you to, to please support our ministry. We love getting letters. You can drop us a line on our website at a1sbc.org, or you can contact us at by, by reaching out to Altoona First Southern Baptist Church, 903 North 4th Street, Altoona, Pennsylvania, 16601. And if you go to our website, a1sbc.org, you'll learn about our church. You can take a tour of our church, a virtual tour. You can walk through the entire building, and you, you, you'll see our mission. Our mission, it's, you know, it's, it's about healing, it's about growing, it's about strengthening your walk with Jesus and building lasting friendships. You know, we are spreading the word of God, we are helping people to develop a personal relationship with Jesus and strengthening their faith journey. We are about reaching the lost and equipping the saved, just like Jesus told us to do in the Great Commission. We've been serving our community since 1911, so if you're a seasoned believer, or if you're just, if you're looking for a church... I know we're a little church, but we're here to learn about Jesus. And I would love to welcome you to our church this Sunday. You can experience the comfort and the joy in the community. We start at 1045. And a quick message for the men, if you're still on here. Men, 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 men. 
this Saturday at 10 a.m. Be at the church. Um, we're going to do the the ramp and the deck. We're going to we have the 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 stain. We have the paint. Everything ready to go. Bring extra paint brushes, extra rollers. If somebody has like a medium sized ladder so we can reach our our um, our signs, so we can paint our sign. That'd be wonderful. And uh, lunch is going to be provided as well. And so um, we're going to have plenty of water on hand as well. But, um, oh, and if somebody has a high-powered blower, I think, Vincent, you said you do, bring it. Because once we scrape, we're going to have to blow and get everything cleaned off before we paint and stain. So, uh, again, Vincent, happy birthday. Uh, also, everyone who is on, thank you so much for listening tonight. We love you. Continue praying. Thank you for listening. God bless you and your family. Take care. Bye-bye.